Um, normally when I do this presentation or a presentation like this, I like to get a feel for who's in the room. Um, and I often start like, how many of you have an Amazon Echo? And unfortunately you all do. Um, so it's kind of cheating. Um, so I'll ask it slightly differently. Prior to coming to reInvent, how many of you had an Amazon Echo? Yeah, that's about, that's about what we see. It looks like about maybe 60, 70 percent um, of you already have one. Um, how many of you are home automation or smart home enthusiasts? You're in the right room. Right on. Um, how many of you are software developers? And how many of you are not software developers? Okay, good, good. All right, I think, the, I think you'll enjoy the presentation. Um, I'm going to start off talking a little bit about um, why Alexa, why Echo, and what, why Amazon's investing so much in this space um, and why we're so excited about it. And then I'll draw, drill into some of the more details of what we're doing in the smart home uh, aspects of Alexa and give you a, a kind of a technical dive, dive deep into how the API works. Um, so the enthusiasts in here who are developers um, can go and write your own skills uh, for Alexa. And those of you who happen to be in the industry and want to make sure the products you build work with Alexa will also get a kind of a head start on that. So with that, we'll kick it off with a, a quick video just to get us warmed up. Alexa, alarm off. Alexa, what's on the calendar today? You have 12 events scheduled. Alexa, call me an Uber. Your Uber will arrive in two minutes. Alexa, what's the weather like today? There's a 100% chance of showers. Alexa, pair my Bluetooth speaker. Okay, paired. Alexa, it's time to reorder some paper towels. Okay, order placed. And Alexa, play my garage music. Playing your garage playlist from Prime Music. Alexa, play some jazz. Playing some jazz from Prime Music. Alexa, who's this? This is Picnic Basket by Lola Tone. Alexa, turn that up. Alexa, ask Domino's to send me my last order. OK, order placed. Hey, isn't that Jason Schwartzman? No, that's not him. I would know if that was him. I'm pretty sure it's him. OK, Alexa, who stars in Mozart in the Jungle? Stars include Malcolm McDowell, Jason Schwartzman. Ah, see? <laughs> that was right. Alexa, change the bedroom temperature to 65 degrees. OK. Alexa, lights off. OK. Alexa, good night. Good night. Sleep tight. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, all the things that customers can do with Echo and Alexa, uh, the, that video uh, shows off a broad range of the capabilities. So I'm Charlie Kendall, and I run the Alexa smart home team at Amazon. So my team is responsible for building all the capabilities into Alexa uh, that enable Alexa to interact with the physical environment. Um, and we refer to that primarily as smart home. So uh, humans have been interacting with each other for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years using primarily our vocal cords and our ears. We um, use other capabilities, my hands and so forth, to communicate. But we primarily have, have started with, with communication using um, voice. Um, written word and using our hands and our eyes to communicate came much later. Um, and for the last 40 or 50 years, as we've invented interactive computers, we've been really restricted in only using our hands and our eyes to interact with those interactive computers, using mice and keyboards, touch screens, and so forth. And so the question you want to ask is, is that really the best way to interact with computers? And why can't we use all of the capabilities we have as humans to do so? Humans use all aspects of our, our bodies to communicate. I, use the, I like using the word actuators and sensors. Um, th those of you who are uh, in the smart home space or, or are enthusiasts about it get the idea that you know, a, a light is an actuator. You actuate it and it causes light to appear. 
Um, a speaker is an actuator. You actuate it, and it causes sound waves to be generated. Um, a door lock changes the state of a door lock. And we also have sensors, uh, the ability to sense whether there's water, motion, light. Humans have the same things. We have uh, all these, uh, these actuators. I have actuators that are moving my arms right now. Um, I have actuators that are moving my vocal cords, causing sound. Um, I even have the ability to put off scent as an actuator. I'm a little nervous, and as a result, I'm putting off pheromones, and those of you in the front row may actually subconsciously or consciously smell me right now. And you, you're using your senses to hear what I'm saying and we're communicating. And we can do it really subtle ways. Like, I can tell whether or not a joke I say goes off well or not based on your body language. And that's part of communication. And wouldn't it be great if we could interact with computers using that same richness of all of our sensors and all of our actuators? And that's really why Amazon is so excited about what, where we've come with Echo and Alexa. We're at the point in time where the technology has developed to the stage where um, it's real. And how do we know this is real? We know it because customers are telling it so. Um, I'll, talk, I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Over the last 50 years, there's been multiple inflection points in computing driven around the interaction models of computers. As an example, in the, in the 70s and 80s, when we transitioned from the pure character mode interfaces of DOS and so forth, to the graphical user interface of GUI, uh, using mice and keyboards and, and windows and so forth, that was a very disruptive time for the industry. Orders of magnitude more customers got access to computers and were able to take advantage of them. And entire fortunes were made in companies who were on the leading edge of that and, were, and, and, and developed it. The same thing happened with the advent of the World Wide, World Wide Web. We wouldn't be here today at AWS reInvent if that hadn't been a disruptive point in the industry. AWS as a service from Amazon is a direct result of Amazon betting early on the web being an explosive, disruptive event. Same thing happened with mobile in the 2000s. Entire new uh, businesses were created, uh, new companies were formed, and orders of magnitude, more customers had access to technology. We at Amazon think we're on the cusp of another one of those disruptive events. They tend to happen every 10 years or so. And we think it's all around natural user interfaces centered on voice. So we believe that voice is the next, represents the me next major disruption in computing. And the reason we're so excited about that is that it gives us an opportunity to do more invention, to create new, new products and, and services for customers and reach more customers in richer ways and enable companies like your companies to do even more as well. Alexa. Oops, hold on, I want to start that yet. Before I, before I start that, I, I want to go back to something I said before. How do we know this is true? Like, people have been talking about this for a long time. 1984, I was in high school, and I did a high school project for a class to create a voice-based voting system so the school could uh, do a mock vote for the 1984 presidential election. And I had an Apple II computer, and I had a, a voice recognition sound card for it that recognized up to 64 phrases. And so I built this thing for the school to use, and it sort of worked. Everyone voted. Either they, either, they could either say Ronald Reagan or Walter Mondale. And um, it sort of worked. It was interesting. And I remember the thing that struck me the most about it was, wow, this stuff is just around the corner. <laughs> and so why do we think it's now? Why, why is, is, is it now? And, we're, and it's because we built this product and enabled it, and then customers are now telling us. So this video I'm going to show you is a montage of customers submitted videos to Amazon just voluntarily. They just said, hey, this is how we're using Alexa Smart Home in our houses. Alexa, kitchen TV on. OK. Alexa, open Sylvia's garage door. Yes, I named my car Sylvia. Turn off the living room windows. Alexa, I'm cold. Your nest is now set to 84. Alexa, turn on the holiday spirit. OK. 
turn on pool deck lights. Fan. Alexa, turn on coffee maker. Alexa, ask my house to turn on the vacuum cleaner. Alexa, pitch ball. Mix me a Negroni. Alexa, satellite off. Bam. So, to create all of this, excitement, we had to do a lot of invention. Um, Amazon, in order to enable Alexa, had to invent um, array microphone technology. The, the Amazon Echo device has seven microphones in it that uh, use be advanced beamforming technology to figure out where the audio is coming from, and then these advanced noise cancellation techniques to make sure they work in, in busy room, in crowded, uh, noisy rooms. Um, we had to invent. Uh, entirely new categories of machine learning technology in order to, to scale this to, uh, to the number of customers we expected uh, and the number of scenarios. We had to invest in machine intelligence. We had to invest and invent technologies to ensure customer trust. Um, it's really important that, that products like this are always engendering more trust of customers around security and privacy. And so there's tons of invention. The way that invention happens, and, and you may have heard this before, the Amazon has this process of called a working backwards from the customer process. And it really starts with the idea that you take whatever it is, the nucleus of the idea, you write it down in a really customer-centric way, and then you work back from that to figure out what needs to be invented to deliver that, that solution. And for Echo and Alexa, the initial statement that the team came up with was, let's build the Star Trek computer for the home. That computer in the cloud that allows customers in their homes to perform all sorts of everyday tasks without having to get the phone out of their pocket or interact using uh, keypads and, and touch interfaces. Uh, and in, in, in doing all of that, the team ended up creating a product that had the ability to, to play music, the ability to know what the weather is, the ability to uh, know how to do math, the ability to understand astronomy, uh, and so forth. And so now we have this, this powerful service in the cloud that has all these capabilities, including smart home capabilities. So we're now at this point in time in the industry where uh, we've, we've proved it. We've proven that this is real. And, and those videos that I showed you, um, those are... are uh, from normal customers that aren't in the tech bubble. The products are selling extremely well um, across all demographics, and smart home usage is, is uh, being used across all demographics. I've been working around home automation and smart home in my career for coming on 30 years. Um, this is actually my third attempt to actually really build um, a home automation related product. And in the previous cases, what we found is that you either had to be extremely rich to build an entire home around this stuff, or you had to be a total nerd like I am, and, uh, and then spend all the time fiddling with things and configuring things. And what we're finding with the use cases that are enabled with Alexa and voice control is customers who aren't willing to do either of those things, they're not, either not rich or they're not nerds, are loving it. The, one of my favorite scenarios to highlight this is the scenario where you're sitting in a chair reading a book and the sun goes down, gets a little dark. You'd like some light. You'd like the reading light to turn on. You could get up and walk across the room and flip the light switch. You could get your phone out of your pocket if you have a, a smart home. Get your phone out of your pocket, unlock the phone, navigate, find the right app, navigate into that app to find the particular light you want to turn on and tap on it, the light turns on. It's pretty cool. It's actually harder than getting up and going across the room using the light switch. Or you can just say, Alexa, turn on the reading lamp. And when you say it that way, you realize that it's this extremely simple solution, this scenario that is just magic for customers. Uh, Echo has something like 40,000 reviews on Amazon.com with a 4.4-ish 
uh, rating. Um, we see, uh, again, demographics across the entire spectrum um, using and, and loving the product. Um, and she does all kinds of things. Um, those of you who, who have attended or attending the event, you all get Echo Dots, already got them. Um, as part of your swag. Um, the Echo Dot is a, um, intended to be a low cost, um, far field enabled Alexa device that you put one in each of the rooms of your house. And it's got a built-in speaker, but that speaker isn't room filling. It's not powerful enough to really fill a room with audio. Instead, Echo Dot has audio output. It has an analog audio out jack on it, and it has Bluetooth audio out, so you can connect it to your existing stereo system. Um, the original Echo device um, has a, is just like that, except for it has a built-in speaker, and we say it has room-filling sound, um, and it's a really, really high-quality uh, audio experience. Um, Alexa is also supported on Amazon's Fire TV. Fire TV has a, a remote control that has a little voice button on it, and if you want to talk to Alexa, you can just press that button and say, turn on the kitchen lights, or uh, who won the Seattle Sounders game? Um, and Alexa will tell you via your Fire TV. Uh, the Amazon Tap, which is the device on the far left of the screen here, is a portable Bluetooth speaker that has Alexa built into it. It also has a push to talk button on it. And then recently we've, ena we've enabled Alexa within Amazon's Fire TV devices. So any Fire TV device, or I'm sorry, Fire tablet device, any Fire tablet devices that you buy from Amazon have, have Alexa in them. But that's not as far as we wanted to go. We want to make sure that other companies can build Alexa-powered devices. So available today in the market are uh, a, a whole suite of devices from third-party companies that, just like our devices, have Alexa enabled in them. Um, the bottom right photo is a, a device called Nucleus. If you get a chance to go by the smart home booth that we have in the, the convention center here in the, in the, um, the pavilion, um, you can see Nucleus in action. But it's a two-way intercom product. So you buy two of these screen-based devices, put one in your kitchen and the other one in grandma's house or downstairs or whatever, and it makes really, it's really easy to do two-way video communications. Nucleus has used Alexa voice service, which is our public API, into Alexa to Alexa enable their device. And so I can walk up to the Nucleus device just like I can walk up to an Echo and say, Alexa, turn on the kitchen lights, and she'll do my bidding. Co-watch, um, on the bottom, on the bottom uh, uh, of the screen here uh, is another Alexa voice service enabled device. It's a smartwatch. Tap on it, give your Alexa commands, and she does your bidding. Um, Ford has announced they're going to be integrating Alexa into cars using AVS. Um, and so AVS is that uh, ecosystem enabler which is all about enabling you as if you make hardware uh, to enable uh, Alexa enable your devices. The Alexa skills kit is our API that allows you to extend Alexa, to give her more capabilities. We refer to Alexa's capabilities as skills. Turns out humans really personify a cloud service like this. Um, they, they, they end up treating Alexa, and you, as you play with it, you, if you haven't already, you will find that your family does this very naturally. They start to re referring to it as a her and, uh, and inferring a human personality, which is a little interesting. Um, but it works really well from a, from a mental model to think of the capabilities, the software you will build to make Alexa smarter as skills. And that's why we called it the Alexa Skills Kit. And there's currently a, so there's a marketplace as part of the Alexa experience where you can go and discover all of the, de the skills that have been created by uh, uh, companies all over the world. There's about 5,000 or more than 5,000 skills in that marketplace today. Um, the number's growing rapidly. Um, and it ranges from everything from Uber. Alexa, ask Uber to order me a car. Boom, car shows up. Alexa, ask Domino's to order a pizza. Order a pizza. Um, and all the way to uh, one of my favorites, which is um, uh, asking Alexa to give me a goal. And in that case, I'm a huge soccer fan. In that case, Alexa goes, goal! And it's very annoying, but it's also kind of funny. So it has the full range of things that are actually useful and things that are not so useful, but fun. Um, so the way that, that skills work, I'll just give you a pretty brief overview of the kind of the architecture. Um, a customer utters an, what we call an utterance to Alexa. 
And the audio of that utterance, after the device has detected the wake word, it doesn't send anything until it's 100% certain that it's heard the, the wake word. And the wake word can either be Alexa, Amazon, or Echo. And you can change it. So I can say, Echo, play Bruno Mars. And in that case, the audio of play Bruno Mars gets sent to the Alexa cloud service. We apply automatic speech recognition and natural language understanding. If you attended any of the keynotes, you, you heard discussions of the underlying technologies that power these and how those are now available um, uh, to AWS developers as Polly and Lex. Polly is the text-to-speech and Lex is the a ASR and NLU engine. Um, we apply ASR and NLU to that audio to figure out what the customer really meant. And then we take the intent and we call into your skill and say, this is what the customer intends. And we've decoded that it's directed for you, your skill. You process that. Do the right thing. Respond back basically with text. We also have a little markup where you can indicate uh, some graphical elements because there's an Alexa companion app that runs on your smartphone. And it also shows you the results of, of, of actions Alexa has taken. And then we communicate back to the device, and it does text-to-speech, or to the, the smartphone and shows the, the card response. So that's the general architecture. Um, the Skills Kit, Alexa Skills Kit, also supports the ability to build skills that are specific to smart home. And in this case, what we do is we enable you to just process just the command for a particular device. You don't have to understand it or do any work around the language modeling. And today, uh, Alexa Smart Home supports broad range of device types. We started with lighting, and within lighting you can do things like turn on and off. So you can change the device to be either on or off or off to on. You can set the brightness. Um, and uh, uh, we also have the concept of scenes. So you can use uh, the, 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 the on and off command to cause uh, home automation systems to do more advanced uh, scene-like behavior. We support thermostats. Um, and in the thermostat case, uh, you, can, you can tell Alexa to turn thermostat to make it warmer, make it cooler, or set it to a specific temperature, change its mode. Developers have also used those capabilities to enable all sorts of other devices, um, ranging from coffee makers, garage door openers, smart sprinkler systems, security systems, door locks, pretty much anything you can imagine. In my house, I have a, a garage where I like to work on cars. And I have an air compressor. And if you've ever been around a garage with an air compressor, you know they're really noisy. They use a lot of energy. And so I don't like mine on all the time. I only on, like it on while I'm working in my garage working on a car. And so I've wired it up so my, garage, my air compressor can be turned on by me saying, Alexa, turn on the air compressor. Or Alexa, turn off the air compressor. And so these primitives that we've enabled allow you to control pretty much any device you can imagine. And we're adding more and more capabilities at a higher level as we, as we move forward. Uh, the, there's a subset of those 5,000 skills that I talked about that are already in the marketplace that are smart home skills. Um, and this is a sampling of the brands that are supported. And it's pretty much the cream of the crop for anything having to do with home automation or smart home capabilities. Um, and it's fully supported, because Alexa is fully supported, in both the, U or in the US, um, in the UK, and as invite only in Germany right now, using German language. Um, and so some of these brands uh, you'll note, note on here are actually uh, brands specific for, for either uh, the United Kingdom or for uh, Germany. So let's talk a little bit about the Smart Home Skill API and how it works. Um, we use AWS Lambdas. And so when the way you build a skill for Alexa is you basically write an AWS Lambda. And um, when Alexa wants you to do something, we will call into your Lambda with some JSON. And then you process that JSON and do the right thing. So the way it works is, We'll use a, for this whole scenario, we'll use turning on a light as an example because it's a nice, simple use case. Alexa, turn on the kitchen light. The device does all the processing to ensure that the wake word was heard accurately and it, and it, and it wasn't someone saying something else. 
and it only processes it when uh, the, the wake word has been recognized. It passes that audio up to the Alexa service, which applies ASR and NLU, discovers that what the customer meant was a smart home intent, and that the directive is to turn something on, and the thing to turn on is the kitchen light. We look up in a database of all the devices that we've discovered on the home network and, and, and that have been connected via uh, Alexa skills and find the brand, the skill that's responsible for that particular light. We call that company's Lambda function with the ID for kitchen light and the directive of turn on. That Lambda then does whatever it needs to do because these are all proprietary systems. Um, every, every vendor has a different model for how they control their own devices. They process that command and they do whatever they need to do to reach back into the customer's home and change the state of that kitchen light to on. And so that's how this works today. So I'll step through the actual, what, the, what the, the, the JSON that goes back and forth looks like. So first it's JSON, and we have a header and a payload. This is very standard stuff you, you see for request response type of patterns. Um, the directive um, has these, these two parts, the header and the, and, the, and the payload, and the header always has a mes message ID on it. This is something that we generate. It's a unique ID for that message, and you'll use it as context for how you're going to respond back and for, uh, for longer-term actions. Um, uh, you pass in uh, the name of the directive, and I'll give you an example of this in a second, but directives are things like the turn on directive, turn off directive, set percentage directive, uh, set temperature directive. Those are examples of directives. Um, and we have a namespace, which is uh, just used basically internally to make sure you're calling the right API. Um, and then we versioned the, the API. Um, so a good example of a directive is the discovery directive. And so this is when we call into your skill and we say, what devices does the customer have? And so if, if this was, uh, I'll use Lifex as an example. Lifex is a smart lighting company. They make smart light bulbs. And they have a skill for Alexa so that their Wi-Fi enabled light bulbs can be controlled by Alexa. And they run a cloud service that knows about the customer and knows about all the customer's Lifex devices. And there's a process that I'm not talking about here to, to do an OAuth, to be able to get an OAuth token to, 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 so we can know who the customer is in these calls. Um, and so that's why you would, you, would, you would be called with an OAuth token. And you'd look that up and you'd say, oh, that's customer Charlie Kindle. So I'm going to now focus for the rest of this on Charlie Kindle's lights. And I'm going to return in a response to that discovery a payload that lists all the devices I know about. And so here, you'll see in the bottom part of this slide, I am returning an array of all of the devices that I know about. Let's say I was Lifex, including some device ID. And the device ID can be any opaque ID that you want to use. It can be a GUID or a, um, uh, a, uh, some sort of a URI or whatever you want, as long as it's unique. Um, and you're also going to return the friendly name of that device. That's how the customer is going to refer to that device with voice. Another example of a directive is a directive where uh, you're going to turn on, a, you're going to actually change the state of a device, in this case, turn on. And here you can see that uh, what's being passed in is just, uh, let's see if this actually works. It says, turn on request, which is the request, and then I'm passing in the appliance ID that it was previously returned uh, to Alexa. That's it. That's the, how complicated the API is. So it's, it's, you can see how it was easy for me, for example, to wire this up so that I can control my air compressor. I used the turn on request to enable that. So just, uh, this just recaps that. So we feel like we're on the cusp of a major disruption in computing, a disruption that is centered on the idea of natural user interfaces and voice, customers being able to use all of our 
actuators and sensors to interact with computers, not just our fingers and our eyes. We're investing heavily in this, internally with Amazon. Every, every organization with Amazon, you saw it at AWS with the launch of, of new services related to, to voice um, with Polly and Lex and so forth. Um, but we want to enable an entire ecosystem. We want to make it so that, that anybody who is in the computing industry can partake in this new ecosystem and this revolution. And so we really have, focusing more on the smart home aspect of it, we have, we have three vectors where we're focusing. The first is the Alexa voice service. Remember, that's the service that if you're building an Alexa device yourself, you want to build a device that's like an Echo, we'll give you all the, uh, the APIs and tools required so you can build a device like that, just as Nucleus has done. That's AVS, Alexa Voice Service. It is a uh, publicly documented self-serve API. You can go to the website, to the developer.amazon.com, sign up, start uh, partying with it right away. We have sample code on GitHub where you can take a Raspberry Pi, and in about 30 minutes, 60 minutes, you can have that Raspberry Pi talking to Alexa. Um, maybe you've seen there's a YouTube video floating around of a guy who put one of these in one of those talking trout fish. It's a, or it was a bass. And he made a, a bass act like Alexa. It's really silly. But this is the type of thing that we're, we're trying to make really, really friction free for developers. Um, so the second part, the second vector of how we're enabling the ecosystem is around Alexa Skills Kit. So I talked about how Alexa Skills Kit works. I talked about the fact that there's a marketplace of these for customers to discover what skills are available, to enable them, to provide feedback, ratings and reviews on, on those skills. For you as developers, you can go to the Alexa Skills Kit portal, and you can sign up, and you can build skills yourself. Again, it's all self-serve, all documented, um, with very easy to use APIs. Uh, the, the, the getting a skill up and running initially um, is a you know a 30 or 40 minute e exercise to get to get just uh, um, something simple up and running. It's very very straightforward and simple, and we're continuing to invest heavily in that. The, for the smart home, the third vector that's really important is how we're enabling customers to discover the devices they can buy that work with Alexa. So Amazon happens to have this big store called Amazon.com, and uh, we sell a lot of different things. And uh, one category of things we sell are smart home devices. And so you can go to Amazon.com slash smart home, and you can see the smart home store. And this is where you'll see Hue and, and uh, Nest and Honeywell and Lifex, Garageo. You'll see all those devices listed there. And as a customer, you'll be able to pick the devices that work well with Alexa. And we're working with all these manufacturers to ensure that their products meet the right quality standards to meet the right connectivity standards. So they're all known to work um, um, with uh, Amazon Alexa. And so over time, you'll see more and more programs from us that allow that, that uh, flywheel to continue. Um, so that's the, that's the essence of the, of the ecosystem. All of the stuff that I've talked about is available for you at developer.amazon.com slash Alexa. Uh, you can, you can uh, dive into AVS from this link, and you can dive into ASK, and you can find out about the Smart Home Skill API um, in gory detail. You can, you can log into the developer portal, and you can start building your own skills. We're also running developer events across the world. Um, we have webinars, uh, in-person events. Um, we hold office hours, and the schedule for all, all of those is also documented up there on the website. So if you want to dive in and learn more, you can. So remember to fill out your evaluations. It's important to me that I get feedback on the presentation. Um, and so please take the time to do that. Um, there's more Alexa sessions um, the rest of the day and tomorrow. Uh, uh, the, uh, there's, there's a couple more even to this. If you look in the guide, there's, a, there's one for custom home builders this afternoon as well. Um, so I encourage you to check those sessions out. Okay. So with that, Thank you very much for taking the time today. Um, I'll be up here uh, afterwards to take questions.